Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Health Discourse with Sushant and Sakshi. So, good morning, Sushant. How are you today? Good morning, all well, all well. So, today we are going to discuss about a very interesting topic, which is probiotics, which is selling like hotcakes in the market. We have many companies coming up with several kind of probiotics for metabolic disorders, for weight loss, for X amount of uh, problems, right? So I think let us begin with the fa- with first question that I that actually interests me all the time. Why do we need probiotics in our daily lives? Uh, so before that, I would like to give a brief synopsis about uh, you know one of the most less studied organs inside the body, which is which is vital and connected with every single you know, biological function set up or there is microbiome, right? So, so um, for all the listeners out there, I'm just trying to sum up some points which you may or may not know, but that is, this is very important to understand the concept of probiotics, right? So, uh, so body have, uh, you know, around 100 trillion microorganisms living at different parts inside our body, starting from mouth to to your small intestine, to your stomach, to your large intestine, to a skin, scalp, vagina, and female. So they, they are ten of these uh, tiny little friend of ours who are living there. And, uh, you know, it's it's really, really fascinating that they drive most of our health decisions, right? And, and uh, if you see, you know, we have around 30 trillion cells and Similar, we have around 38 trillion microbes living in our gut. So we have as many cells as microbes, right? And each microbe outnumber uh, us in terms of our genes by 150 to 1. So we have 25,000 human genes and, you know, uh, around 2 to 20 million microbial genes, right? So, so you see... Mm, at best, we are one person human at worst, we are zero point one person human, right? Epigenetically, right? So, so the so you know, the a lot of these my things are biological processes are done by microbes, right? From metabolizing food, regulating our satiety, blood sugar levels, right? Uh, training our immune system, helping in differentiate between friend and foe, probably. Hiring of pathogen, balancing our hormones, you you name any function, right? So most of these are done by our microbiome and a larger part lives inside our gut, right? Uh, so the largest colonization of our microbiome is inside our gut. And uh, in terms of understanding them, it is important to understand their functions. It is important to understand what they give us, right? So, so a lot of these uh biomarkers and compounds which we generally measure uh when we go for our standard routine diagnostic investigations right uh, whether it is blood works whether it is lft kft you know cholesterol and number of these parameters right these actually come from the the compounds and metabolites secreted by the microbiome in the bloodstream right so so a lot of uh you know, so a lot of these uh, metabolites or secondary metabolites, tertiary metabolites, whatever we call it, right? These are a byproduct of your microbiome interacting with various foods, right? They are producing these metabolites, these metabolites. It gets absorbed in your bloodstream and that determines your health, right? So so, so that is really, really important to understand here, right? Um, and... Uh, that microbes, if you are not, you know, taking care of your microbiome, if you are not studying microbiome, which most of the doctors are not doing it. So the your biology is your only one person biology is being addressed by your by your healthcare practitioner, right? So for for everyone, it is important to understand that you should understand your microbiome and uh, should include in your routine investigation, right? Uh, having said that microbiome is at least 90 percent people you know uh, equate microbiome to probiotics right which is not the case which is which is which is wrong although probiotics 
are are important in terms of you know balancing your microbiome you know promoting various beneficial functions right if you if you are on a course of antibiotics of your ultra processed diet you know probably uh, you you have a low microbiome diversity so there is a need for probiotics but again you know it is important to understand first the concept of probiotics right so so what was your first question sakshi so uh are they actually important for us? I mean, can we do away with without probiotics? I mean, can nutrition be the only, uh, you know, requirement for our body? Or probiotics at this point of time in the age that we are living, is it actually required for our body? Okay, so first of all, let us define what probiotics is, right? So there are three elements which define probiotics. First is probiotics. Here we are clearly probiotics are live organisms when taken in adequate amount confer a health benefit to the host. So we are the host, right? So so international association for us, uh, you know, international scientific association for probiotics and prebiotics define that probiotics are you know live organisms when administered in, in right quantity confer a health host, right? So, so, you know, uh, first thing is that, again, not everyone needs probiotic, right? Uh, if you are, so, so consider this, if you are living in a, in a world where you are doing regular exercise, right? You are away from a pollution and toxic environment, you are having... Uh, less of, or you're not having ultra processed foods, you're having more of whole foods, you're growing your own vegetables, you're sleeping well, you know, you know what you're eating, you're not falling for fat diets, you're not going for high protein, or, or it also all these diets, or probably, you know, you are eating the right amount of foods, you know what you need to feed your microbiome, right? You do not need probiotics. Right. So if you if you are living in, 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 in towns, or probably if you're living in in suburbs, you are living in 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 areas, or you are living in wild areas where you know there is a lot of these uh, homely grown vegetables, fruits are there. There is no no uh, modern things like uh, so much pollution and vehicles, and you know, uh, uh, and you are having a good sleep. The weather is good, you know. You know so you don't need providers. I think what you're trying to say is if you're living in tier two or tier three cities where there is still greenery around you, right? And yeah. you're living in that sort of an environment where you are able to, you know, have fresh produce from, even if you're not growing, you're able to procure freshly harvested food from locally, right? So uh, except for let's, let, let's just leave the tier one and urban cities where there are, very uh, you know meager amount of farming activities let's just leave that but yes if you're a person living in tier 2 and try it, or tier 3 city or even uh, in mostly the rural or semi rural area so you don't really need probiotics right that's what no. you're trying to say no you don't need that right mm -hmm. and and again if if you uh, see uh, so, the, so as you rightly pointed out, so people living in, in metros, in Taiwan cities who are resorting to a lot of uh, processed food. So what I mean by processed food is packaged foods, having sugar, having artificial sweeteners, you know. And with, with this, do you actually mean the packaged grains and the uh, uh, packaged... To some extent, thing? yes. To some extent, okay. yes, right? Because... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we live in an area where we, we get all everything natural, everything homegrown, right? And and uh, so we don't buy a package grain. Again, package grain, you need to delete the labels, what is there. So there are 70, 60, 70 percent may be good, right? But they, they, so I'm not sure. Again, the, the age of that particular uh, inventory is also important, right? So for so people who are eating ultra-processed foods, who are eating a lot of these package buying from supermarkets, uh, deficient sleep, you know, living in, in an environment where there's a lot of pollution, right? Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, 
again you don't do too much exercise again uh, you know uh, what i mean by exercise is not that you know uh, going to gym working out two two and a half hours picking up huge weights and you know making your six pack abs and you know eating a lot of protein that is not exercise that is insanity right so so you need to uh, in terms of exercise you need to at least exercise even i do a little bit more but again you should exercise 60 minutes at least uh, three to five days a week right that is a normal exercise because if you do more that is also harmful in terms of exercise so so these these are two parameters basic parameters whether you should take probiotics or not second thing it is important to understand taking probiotic doesn't mean you know you are done away with your with your dietary choices or you just live on your pills because these are live organisms provided they are live till the time they reaches your gut right you really need to feed them with the right food right for instance i'll give you an uh, example sushan yeah. sushan yeah. uh, can we yeah. hold this thought here for a minute yeah, and sure. for for the benefit of our viewers i would really like to uh, uh, you know help us understand sure. that what happens when you ingest a probiotics in the mouth right what is the journey does it actually reaches the gut what happens if what exactly happens let's say you you're having a probiotic in a powdered form you you we can find a lot of sachets are coming up we can yeah. find pills that are coming so do they actually make up uh, you know end up in the colon okay so so we have to understand the delivery profile there you know uh, so there are a lot of uh, hiccups and troubles or maybe in simple words there are a lot of uh, you know uh, red lights and stops right uh, before uh, your probiotic reaches your the you know uh, desired location that is your gut right so again depending upon what form you are taking right whether it is powdered or capsule form right uh, uh whether it is uh, what is the delivery profile whether it is you know it it actually uh so, so from the mouth, you know, you have a bit of acidic environment in the mouth as well, right? Which may prevent probiotics from moving further, right? And again, uh, that is maybe less chances, but but uh, uh, a lot of these get stuck up in stomach. Stomach is really high stomach acid and it destroys your uh, this uh, particular probiotic. And again, if it passes through stomach, there are you know, enzymes in your small intestine, right? And so a lot of interaction happening, which may also further prevent. Besides, if you go to the gut, again, there is a lot of colonization resistance, right? So there are a lot of existing microbes which may prevent you from, uh, you know, attaching yourself to the gut. And uh, again, there is a concept called mucosal resistance. So probably, you know, uh, these microbes should, should be able to find a place and live safely there. So, so again, if you're taking in powdered form, it is, there's a 90% chance that it will not reach the gut. It will not give you intended benefit, right? Uh, for, for people who are getting benefit, it is not necessarily because of probiotics because, you know, if you see in capsule form, it has to be in such a way that, you know, it is protected from all these, you know, environment for us. Assume that this probiotic is being hit by everyone going around and then probably to protect that. Right? So again, there has to be outer shell, there has to be the inner shell, there has to be, you know, uh, these probiotics and outer shell should be able to help survive the probiotic, if, you know, till the time it reaches the gut, right? So, so there, are, there are numerous factors at play. First thing is that uh, which form you are taking, you know, uh, what time you're taking, how long it will survive again, whether these are again in another important thing, what I will talk about here is uh, probably we can discuss a bit late on this, but just give that important to notice that these should be live till the time it reaches your gut. Right? That is the most important thing. If it is not, it is just a waste of money. Yeah, yeah so uh, what uh, I've seriously feel 
that a lot of brands claim indian brands that they have used some encapsulation technology and and i don't i highly fail to understand how it is possible that you can encapsulate a powder you can just put a coating right that's like a prebiotic coating but that is not necessarily an encapsulation technology right we have seen many companies uh, you know outside uh, in, the, in from the us they have patents holding the encapsulation technology yeah so that's what i feel that you know i think there are a lot of bogus claims and there is no scientific research behind these things so again i'll tell you an important question to ask is that when you are taking a probiotic probably it's a blend it it's not a one it's maybe a couple of strains then uh, again yeah another thing important read the label is it strain or species right again uh, because oh, so, so let me deep down on few facts before we i answer your question right? so uh, if you see every species so when it comes to probiotic uh, we talk of lactobacillus bifidobacteria man you say we ingest them and it's, it's done right and then uh, we will be we assume we'll be healthy right it's 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 not that simple you know so so uh different species each species would may have 100 200 strain every strain would have a different impact on your body right uh, so so it is not eating i took bifidobacterium or i took lactobacillus acidophilus or or some other bacteria right and it is uh going to do wonders it is not the case it would you have to understand which strain why this strain has been picked up how this strain would impact what inside your body so, so you know uh, so that's why i'm giving you example so there is there is a beneficial commensal microbiome i can even say mosinophilia right again this is said to regulate your metabolic health it is said to uh, you know uh, stimulate your bile production but it only does when you are feeding with the right nutrition in terms of right fibrous diet to this microbiome right so we know the fiber what we consume is is hard to digest by human body and it is it is your gut where a lot of these microbes you know produce or 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 you know uh, eat this fiber and synthesize into bitrate and a lot of short chain fatty acid which is energy for the chloroplasts which send the neurobiot barrier which regulate your metabolic health your blood sugar your satiety a lot of these things now if you are taking this probiotic for instance right and you are not feeding it and let's assume it reaches your gut safely right if you are not eating high fiber diet or you are eating ultra processed diet you know this microbe may express certain genes which would lead to food allergies and there's a research around which came in over 2023 right so so first thing is so here are two things to be considered right first thing is you have to understand your microbiome profile you know which microbes are there in your gut right now who are active what they are producing what metabolize their security right so these are the basic questions you have to list down okay this how do you determine how i need a particular strain right the, the standard otc probiotics may or may not help right because this it's just a guess work you know you are, they have made certain otc they have they have put in certain species not even strains i don't know how many strains in which strain and whether the blend has that uh, clinical trial efficacy or not right so so you have to know first which strains your body needs right which what which metabolites is, is low in production or we are probably a lot of in, pro inflammatory metabolites which are high in production probably you have to suppress them or you have to stimulate the production of certain metabolites right so these are the things you should know first important thing right second thing uh, is very very important is the 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 the, the uh, how potent or uh, it is right in terms of you know uh, uh, getting this probiotic so so your label may say okay we have 3 billion 4 billion 10 billion you know uh, cfus on this 
but you know he, we have 10 different strains 15 different strains right but you know uh, maybe you know uh, 96 or 98 percent of the strains maybe maybe responding 20 percent of that volume maybe respond to only one strain or maybe two percent will be less of the strain or you know uh, 80 percent of it may not be live microorganisms right so you so as i mentioned the organisms has to be live and which is your gut right there are things where these organisms are not, organisms are not live right and they it is not going to confer any health benefit right so 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 you know this this is something really really important if you if there's something written in the label that we have these these these, these blah 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 strains these are the cfus you have to understand you know how much of each of this strain is there first you define which what is your microbiome profile what metabolites are being secreted what is in what what is lacking, what you need more of, what you need less of, right? Which metabolite again, based on that, you then you determine, okay, you know, what exactly is the composition, whether they have 98%, is it dead or alive, whether it is concentrated on certain certain strains, which which your body do not need more of that, right? So there's the multiple factors. Third thing is the delivery profile. So, so the encapsulation technology which you have mentioned right it it may uh, you know uh, it may actually uh, be released early so it may be destroyed in stomach acid or it may be released late right so so you may not get the immune system benefits right so 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 these are the few things have to be considered when it comes to you know uh, when it comes to your probi probiotic selection again you know, if you're taking a probiotic, it doesn't mean, you know, you don't need to take the right diet. Again, you have to understand what nutrition choices should be right for your microbiome. So just having a probiotic is not going to be the health. You need to eat the right diet, which I think that is really, really important. You know, from a perspective of, you know, ingesting the right capsule, which is, you know, which is giving you the strain which your body needs right now, these strains, and you need to feed these strains in the right food so that, you know, it actually produces metabolites, which is released in your bloodstream, which confer health benefits, right? Second thing is, when you're taking the, the composition, again, you have to understand what is the composition, what is the volume of each strain, whether they are dead or alive, whether there's not, not much concentration of single or couple of strains, they have to be varied strains, right? Depending upon your microbiome profile, third is delivery profile, right? So when you are actually, uh, you know, uh, the capsule is going, so it should not be delivered too early or too fast, or too late, right? So so these are the factors which has to be considered when it comes to your selection of your probiotic. Again, in powdered form, is just waste of money. It's you know, uh, as you rightly pointed out, you know, there there is no in India specifically there is no clinical trial and evidences on blends right so so this so these are few things which are really really important to understand right so i think with this uh, i would really recommend you to conclude this talk with how to administer these probiotics i mean where what kind of role does nutrition plays in it so again you know nutrition is really really important to understand you know you know uh, uh, what do you call it? Nutrition is the key for your health. Whatever you eat, you feed your microbiome. And these microbiome actually eat up these, these food substrates and convert into various metabolites, right? And these metabolites actually give you good things or bad things. If you give you bad things, it produces, it produces toxin, it triggers inflammation, which makes you develop a disease, right? So, so essentially, uh, you know, uh, you need to understand, even if you're taking probiotics, right? You need to understand the entire profile of your microbiome, why you need a particular strain, what it will do, what particular it will produce, right? It should be administered in the right quantity, in the right form, right? In the right composition, okay? Uh, uh, again, it, there is a, there is an encapsulation technique which makes sure it doesn't get destroyed during the transport process inside the body, right? So, so, so these are really, really important things to understand, right? Uh, uh, from... Uh, from the perspective of admission the right probiotics and, and you need to feed the probiotics the right food. If it's not, then it is not going to help. Yeah. 
I think they are pretty well uh, correct, uh, you know, pointed out in sides. So I think with this, let us conclude this talk here, and uh, we'll we'll come up with another episode. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Akhil. Thank you.